you are going to find that writing a job server extension is very similar to writing a Vault Explorer extension. We did that deliberately to make it easier to use. I'll start by creating a new Visual Studio class library project. Next, I set my references to DLLs in the SDK. This time, it's to extensibility framework and job processor extensibility. Now we need to implement the required interface. This time it's the iJob Handler interface. There are only two functions in this one. The can process allows us to verify that our handler can process the job type. The execute function is where we do the actual work. We have two parameters passed into this function. The first one provides us with various utilities to make it easier for us to program. It provides a mechanism for logging errors and it provides the vault context so that we can talk to the vault server. The second parameter is our job object. In this example, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm just going to print out a message when the job gets executed. I can't pop up any UI. So I'll just write a text file in the temp folder. My temp file is currently empty, so I'll easily know when something gets added. I also need to define my job type. I'll call it autodesk.jobdemo. Since this is a vault extension, I need my vset config file. I'll 
I'll just copy it from the documentation. I also need to set my five assembly attributes. And I need to compile as .NET 3.5. In my execute command, I need to return an outcome. Returning a value of success means that the job will be removed from the queue when it is completed. Now I'm ready to deploy to my program data folder. Job processor extensions have an additional step. You must edit jobprocessor.exe.config. Again, I can copy from the documentation. The attribute names are a bit confusing, so I suggest focusing only on replacing the red parts. The job processor config file can be found alongside of job processor exe and job processor exe can be found in the explorer folder of your vault client. So I'm adding in my XML, copied from the documentation. 
the job type is what we defined in our code autodesk.jobdemo the full class name is the namespace plus the class name by default the namespace is the assembly name And the assembly name is just the name of the DLL. The job server feature is off by default, so we must enable it before anything can work. You can set this value through the global administration settings. I already have this enabled in my vault, but if you have a new vault, this might not be checked. So just make sure that it's checked. Now we can run the job processor. If everything is configured correctly, we should see our custom job type in the job types window. The check means that our DLL loaded properly. So now we have our plugin running, but it's not doing anything because we don't have a job on the queue. So how do we do that? There are two ways. The first is by using the Web Services API. There's a function called add job in the job service. If we wanted to, we could go back to our Hello World program and add in code to establish a server connection and call this function. But I mentioned a second way to get a job on the queue. You can tell the server to queue jobs when things change a lifecycle state. We can set this up using the lifecycle event editor in the SDK. After you log in, you can define which transitions fire which jobs. I'll have my job fire whenever a file moves from WIP to released. Just commit the changes and I'm done. Now I will go back to Vault Explorer and move a file through that lifecycle state change.
Notice that the job is now on the queue. Job Processor checks for jobs every 10 minutes by default. I don't feel like waiting, so I'll use a trick to speed up things. Just pause and restart Job Processor, and it will process your job. This is a useful trick when testing. Now my job is processed. The job is no longer on the queue. And if I go to my temp folder, I can see my output. The date value confirms that it was just written. And that is it.